Do you want to create overlays and graphics for your virtual meetings? Maybe having a lower third with a title or your name, maybe having a sidebar with some points you want to share or something a little bit more creative with a transparent background to go over your video. But you're feeling intimidated, you don't know where to start, or you're worried it's going to be too complicated. Well, that is where Canva comes into play. I am going to go over how you can quickly and easily design and export video overlays for your virtual meetings. Now, why Canva? Well, first of all, whether you have the free or paid plan, you can set up custom dimensions, choose from shapes, graphics, and photos, whether you want solid or gradient colors, and you can even do simple animations on the free plan. If you do have the paid plan, you have access to way more graphics and photos. You can export with transparent backgrounds. You can also start to customize your animations like animating text or graphics and the handy magic resize tool. If you realize that's not the size I want, you can very quickly update your design. One of the things before we dive into how to actually design is I want you to avoid a common mistake, which is not considering your dimensions. So when I say dimensions, I mean the video dimensions that you have for your virtual meeting. In many cases, we have dimensions like this, 1920 by 1080. Now it's not always gonna be that resolution, but in general, we are looking at the 16 by nine ratio. And this is helpful when you're thinking about what you actually want to show up on the screen. For example, if we want to have a lower third come across the bottom, do we want it to come across the entire bottom like this? And this example, I have a graphic that I created in the dimensions of 1920 by 180. So go the full width, but pretty short. The other thing I could do, maybe I like this graphic, but I don't want it to take up the whole bottom, or this is a little too thick. I could actually just resize. This is the exact same graphic. I have just adjusted where it sits in my overlay, which you can easily do in OBS or Ecamm. So you wanna think about the width, but you also wanna think about the height. So maybe you want a sidebar to come in either from the left or the right. Well, then we think how much space do we want it to take up? If you consider that the full width could be 1920, we can do a fraction like a quarter of the width, a third or two thirds. Let's look at some examples. So this example is a quarter. This is 480 by 1080. And the nice thing about a quarter it is kind of narrow, but it allows you to stay centered and it's not too strange. I could just have this pop up and then disappear again and I stay centered. Now, if we take a look at a third, this is where it's a little strange that I'm still in the center. So if I am using a third, which is a nice width because it's got a little more space to write, I would position myself in the center of the remaining two thirds. And then if we actually look at a two thirds graphic, it takes up a lot more room, but this is helpful if you do need a lot more space to demonstrate something. Maybe you have more writing or you're showing a chart or a graph than something like 1280 by 1080 is nice. You can also make this a bit smaller. In general, I would avoid a 50-50 split down the middle. I just think our eyes gravitate more towards thirds. It doesn't have to be an exact third, but play around and just in general, I would maybe avoid the 50-50. Okay, let's dive into Canva and actually see how you can create these. The first thing I am doing here is I actually have a folder. I do recommend you organize your designs and I created a folder called custom overlays. I'm going to create a new design and let's start with a lower third. Now in the example I showed you, when we pick down here at the bottom, custom size, I could say I want the full width 1920, but for height, I want a fraction of it. So the one that I designed was 180, but let's look at an example of a little bit shorter and say 150. When I create this design, it will open up in a new window and I can see what this lower third will look like. If I click on the background, you will now see the option to choose your color. And if I click on this, I can easily choose a background color. For example, if I choose a dark purple, I can do that but you can also choose gradients. And if we scroll down, you can see a, a number of solid colors and there are gradients as well. So I could choose something like this if I want and then customize. So if I scroll up and click on this little plus here, that's where I can start to pick the exact colors. Maybe I wanna play around with this and I actually want this to be more in this 
kind of purpley color, a bit darker. And then I go over here and I choose maybe a little bit more of this blue. So I'm, I'm playing around with the colors. I can also change the style of the gradient. So maybe I want it along the bottom or in the corner, or perhaps like this one, the darker is on the edge. And let's pick this one. No, let's do this one. Once we've got what we want, then we can add our text. So over in the sidebar, I'm choosing text. I have chosen some of my fonts, but you can, you can customize what your default fonts are. I'm going to change this to white or like a gray, a light color here. And here we'll just say, uh, you know, show title. Let's imagine I'm recording a video. I can adjust where this is using a little drag. And I can also just make this bigger by dragging. And then you can use the guides to show you when you're in the center. So right now it's showing me that I'm centered. I've got the title here. You can put your name, whatever that is. If we like this design, we could duplicate it and just update it. So now I'm going to say new show title, keep it really basic. I recommend that you name your pages if you have more than one, because when you export multiple pages, it, it's helpful to actually see the title. So now we got new show title and maybe I want another one I'm going to duplicate, but this one will just leave blank and I will call this blank. And in this case, I would just use this lower third and customize my own text in OBS or Ecamm. And it's nice to have a blank option available if you ever just want to make a change on the fly. If you wanted a regular, if I click new page, you'll see that it's blank. And that's because I've been using a gradient color. So if I did choose a regular color, let's say I pick a solid color and we'll just pick this one. As soon as I add another page, it will keep that solid color. So if you have a gradient, it won't duplicate. But if you do have a, if you have a solid color, it will. And you can easily remove a page if you like. Once you've got everything the way you like it, you can click share and then download. And it will you tell you the file type. So and I do like PNG for static images. And then we just click download. If you want to customize which pages, maybe you only want to download one of them. You could say, okay, just want the current page, or you can pick exactly which one you want to download and then click done and choose download. And there you go. You've just exported your lower thirds. Now let's look at a sidebar. I'm going to add a new design here, create new, and we're going to custom size. I'd like to make it one third. So I will say it's 640 by 1080. And here we have the sidebar. So I could do the same thing. I could customize the background, maybe choose a gradient, but I'd like to show an example with a photo. And if we want a photo background, we have kind of two options. One is we can go down to apps on the bottom and scroll down until you see background. When you click background, this will just give you a bunch of different photos that work well in the background and they are categorized. If you have the free plan, you'll be able to tell which ones you can access and which ones you can't. The other option is you can go into elements and you can search in the photos. So if I scroll down to photos and say, see all, I can look for some background photos. So let's say I want to look for a teal background and I'm just trying to find a nice background color. So these are really pretty. Ooh, I like this. I can choose choose what I want and you can you can rotate if you'd like or you can simply drag down and drag to the side. Oh, I didn't go all the way down. Obviously because this was horizontal, you can play around. If I decide I don't like that close up, I can pick another background and let's try actually rotating this one and then I'll bring it up to the corner. We'll bring it down to the side and then finish by dragging. It will automatically adjust. If you ever don't like how something's positioned, you can double click and I can maybe adjust it sideways or I can even make it bigger and I can adjust it so that I see the part of the pattern that I like the most. And once you click away, you've positioned it the way you want. So now I have this kind of teal textured background. Now I can go and add text. So maybe I am hosting a meeting and I'm sharing some information about a new project. I am going to customize here and say, first we'll talk about what is the project and why now? And then what's, oop, what's next? 
And I'm using capitalization, but you can also, if you have the pro plan, you can change the your writing effects. I'm going to position this. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And got this in the middle. There. So now I have this sidebar, and maybe this is something I use at the start of the meeting to just center everyone. How is this meeting going to be run? We're going to talk about what the project is, why we're doing it, and what are the next steps. So this is a really simple example of using a sidebar or graphics to guide a meeting. Now let's say I want to add some animation to it. Even on the free plan, you can add some simple animations. So click on the text or the thing you want to animate. You can also animate graphics and click animate in the top right. Once you do that, you will see all of the basic animations and when you hover, they will show you what they look like. And if I choose one, on the free plan, you can choose an animation and you can set, is it going to animate on the way in, on the way out or both? You need the pro plan in order to adjust the speed or the direction. So let's say I want it to come from the top down, which makes sense, I can do that. I can also make it show up slower or I can make it speed up. So those are my options there. If I export this, instead of a photo, I'm going to be downloading a video. And so that is a difference that you will have if you do have an animation. If this wasn't animated, then this would just be a photo. And either way, you would import your overlay into your scene and have it all set up. So that is the example of a sidebar. Now let's look at a little bit more of a creative example. And I'm going to add a new one and this is using transparent backgrounds. So let's do a custom size. I'm actually going to use the full size. So 1920 by 1080. When you export with a transparent background, it doesn't technically matter what your dimensions are because you can just stretch and zoom in and position or even shrink it. Because the background is hidden, like the overlays example I showed you before, I could position that wherever I want. And so the actual dimensions don't matter as much because there's no background showing. If we go into our elements and scroll down the side, something that Canva has, which is helpful, is called frames. And anything in a frame, if you drag a picture into a frame, it will be contained into that shape. And then if you export, you will only see things in that shape. For example, if I want to, I don't know, have a, something that looks kind of like a tablet, I've got open here, and this one has a, a blue frame. I'm gonna change that and maybe have a white border, which you can't see now, but when I export it, you'll see the white border. If I were to drag a photo in here, so let's search for a photo of a desk, and I want to see the pictures of a desk, and let's drag this in, and I can reposition this. So now the only thing, if I export without backgrounds, you will just see this with the white border, nothing else. So the nice thing with the frames is that you can really start to shape things and uh, and that's where you can get creative with these letters. So let's take a look at that. I will delete this element. Okay, we are going to go back to frames. So if I scroll down again, we go to frames and this is where I'm going to search for letters. So they have all the letters of the alphabet in different sizes and shapes and I'm going to use the word vivid as an example because it's so easy. You can see all the different options. I'm going to pick these kind of tall skinny ones. We're going to duplicate this V. I'm going to search for an I and we'll use this one. We will duplicate this I here and finally a D. So it's the word vivid in which it's just really quick to make. So now I've got this word vivid. These are in frames and I get to choose what I want to go in here. Now, previously I was playing around with a really vibrant, bright picture, and I'll show you one example of it. If I go back to my elements and recently used, I used this, this picture here. Now this is on the pro plan. If I drag this picture into the V, I can adjust how I want, and I could actually do this across all of the pictures. It's beautiful, but it's not practical when you export it. So let's look at a more practical option, which would be something like this one, where if I drag this in, it's got a little bit of depth and I can just do that for each letter and just drag this picture over and over into this. And 
what I have done is created these letters using this image and you can get creative. I could try different ones. Maybe if I wanted this leaf example, that actually might be really pretty, but you get the idea. And if you can always undo something, if you don't like when I export this with the transparent background, all I'm going to see is the word vivid on the screen. I can move that around. Transparent backgrounds are also great for logos. If you just want to have a logo on your page, export with transparent backgrounds. You really start to have so many more options when you have this transparent background. But all in all, Canva is quick. It is easy and honestly, it's pretty fun. And when you start to customize your meetings, add these graphics, it really helps you to stand out in virtual meetings and presentations.